Number seven then from the 2018 SQA Higher Maths Paper 2. It's a nine mark question here, it's split into several parts. It means that you recognise the first bit. As soon as you see this, you think synthetic division. Indeed, what does it say? Show that this x minus two is a factor of this cubic expression for two marks. Hence, factorise this fully, four marks altogether. Well, there's two ways of going about showing that that might be a factor of that. One way is just to divide it into it and see that it divides exactly so the remainder is zero. And there are two ways of doing that. There's the real division, which I'm not going to do this time, or the synthetic division. The other way is to use the theorem that the value of this expression, putting the number two into it, is the same as the remainder that you would get if you were to divide by the factor x minus that number. So one way would be to put two into this and see if the value of that comes to zero, because that then means that the remainder on dividing by this factor would also be zero. So you could do this, you could say if x equals two, that means you've got two times two cubed minus three times two squared minus three times two plus two. Then you would work it out. 16, 12, six, plus two, and that indeed comes to zero. And then you can say, since f of two equals zero, that means x minus two is a factor. Now, if you did that, you would get the two marks. You'd get one for evaluating it to get the answer zero, and the other one for making this complete statement. However, the problem with this is, it's a dead end. It doesn't help you with the rest of the question. So, you're better doing it the division way. And if you're going to be doing it the division way, just use a synthetic division rather than the full algebraic division. So, the coefficients here, two, negative three, negative three, two. Now notice, two is the candidate that you're using. You're checking if two is a zero, as in it gives the answer zero. So it's two that you're going to be putting through it. But remember, this table here is essentially an evaluation table. It's just that it also doubles up as a division table. So running through it, drop down the two, multiply it up, two twos are four, add it down, multiply it up, add it down, multiply it up, and there's a zero. Now, yes, you usually box off that zero or even underline it to make it stand out from the rest of the numbers, but that's not sufficient for the second mark. You'll get the first mark from this table, certainly, using synthetic division to check if it divides in exactly. But now you've got to make a statement which involves two parts. The relevant parts here would be, since the remainder equals zero, that means that x minus two is a factor. Make sure you've got both parts in. Don't just put x minus two is a factor, or just put remainder equals zero. It has to be both parts of that to get this mark. The second part, or so they say, because it's really just a continuation would be, hence fully factorize this. Well, you already know one factor because you've checked it. So you know that you've got two x cubed minus three x squared minus three x plus two is equal to x minus two times and there must be some quadratic left. Well, you actually know the first and last terms already because in this expansion, there's only one way of getting x cubed. The first times the first makes this. So that must be x times two x squared. And the last times the last makes that. So that must be minus one. The only one you don't know is the middle one, but you can get it from this table. Look, the same numbers. Two, negative one, so that middle one is a one. That's plus x. Now it's just up to you. Putting that though, is the first of the marks. Now you just have to factorize this bit yourself. Well, it's a two x squared. You're assuming oh, no, it factorizes well, well, integers, so we're just jumping with two x times x. One can only be one and one. We have to add up to the middle term, which is positive. So that product, the outer one must be the positive one. And that's it done. Aye, what's that word? Numpty, I think it is.
So in part B, now it switches into the constellations here for these final five marks. Well, what are you told? You're given this form of a reconciliation with an unknown factor. You're told the fifth term is 2a minus 3, so that's that same unknown factor in it. I need to show that the seventh term is given by this, just for the one mark. That seems a bit mean here, because if you know a particular term, the only term you can find using a reconciliation is the following term. So that wouldn't be u7, that would just be u6. So u6, according to this, would be a times u5, which is made up of 2a minus 3. Take away 1. Multiply it out. 2a squared minus 3a minus 1. If you didn't multiply it out, and then you did it for the second step, you're just going to end up with a nested form, which would be another synthetic table. Now you can get u7 by doing the same step again. a times u6. Take away 1. So that finally gives you, whoops, 2a cubed minus 3a squared minus a minus 1, as required for one mark. That's all a wee bit of a mess there, isn't it? Now, part C, final four marks. For this sequence, it's known that u7 is equal to u5 and also that a limit exists. Well, if a limit exists, it means that multiplying number there, that factor must be a proper fraction between one and negative one. And that's the first thing you have to do for three marks find that value of a, and the second part, find the limit. Well, you have to use this. u7 is equal to u5, it said. Well, that means u7, just copying it down, is equal to u5. Make an equation. And then, no surprise, when you bring that over, it'll affect the a term and the constant term. You've got 2a cubed minus 3a squared minus 3a but plus 2 equals 0, and you've got the same expression that you had in part A. Because in order to solve this, you need to factorise it. But you've already factorised it here, so you know the answer. It's going to be, but these are A's, not X's. It's going to be A minus 2, 2A minus 1, and A plus 1 is equal to 0. So rearranging it, equating and rearranging it, gets a mark. Don't quite get a mark now. You get a mark when you solve that. So that means that a is either equal to 2, or a half, or negative 1. Now, that is worth a mark. Then, you can't have all three answers because it said it had a limit. So there's only one answer, which is a half. And give the reason, since a half is between 1 and negative 1, because it's a proper fraction. gets a mark. I think I'll need some space at the top here just to finish it off, I've been too crushed here. Now, you know the form of the reconciliation now? It's un plus 1 is a half of un minus 1. So to get the limit, you've got two choices, but there's only one mark. You can either just state the formula, which isn't worth any marks on its own. It would be once you start putting in the numbers, b notices a negative 1 over 1 minus a half. 1 minus a half is a half, so that means the 2 would multiply that up to negative 2. But it's only the final answer that gets the mark. The alternative would be to say this. You'll have reached a limit when the value put in is equal to the value you get out. So taking that across gives you 1 take away a half is a half L is negative 1. Taking the 2 across and multiplying gives you negative 2. The same both ways.